Um, I will move on now uh, to our next talk and uh, welcome our next speaker. Uh, that's Claire Kirkby. And um, Claire is the lead ICC nurse for the North Thames GMSA. And she is going to talk to us today about the pilots, uh, which is a sort of collaboration between the BHF and the NHS um, around sudden cardiac death, but also uh, involves patients who survive cardiac arrest. So looking to improve um, processes for them, particularly, I think, around family screening and genetic testing. So thank you very much for joining us, Claire, and um, I will hand over to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, and to Stephanie for inviting me to talk today. Let me just share my screen. Uh, you're fine I think that you just if you share again where you were Claire and then just switch the presentation mode uh, there we are is that working now oh, it's clicking on we've got your kind of other oh, yep 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 and then if you just toggle the display settings is it or presenter mode at the top of the screen sorry um oh i'm so sorry about this uh no worries no worries one let's see there we are is that better just give it a moment we're seeing the kind of background screen at the moment just for your laptop uh -huh. Um, how about now? What you have, what you have before. We could see oh. your slides previously, but just in a different mode. There we are, is that better? Just giving it a moment to see if it comes up. Can people see it? Yes, perfect. Wonderful. Lovely. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Right. <laughs> yeah, thank you for asking me to talk today. Um, I'll be talking about uh, the new pilot pathway um, it, that we have running in England. It has several different kind of working titles, so you might know about the project already, but via a different name. Um, and I'm the coordinator, as Rachel said, for North Thames GMSA or Genetic Medicine Service Alliance. I can see a lot of people actually from the um, project on the call on the course today. So if I get stuck or miss anything out, hopefully someone will um, help me. So the project was created in 2019, but with COVID there was a hiatus and sites only started going live from February 2022. There was a, about a year's di uh, difference between the first and the last sites um, going live and opening up. And then the project should continue until March next year. It's really aiming to establish closer ties between the NHS and the coronial service. So that when there has been a sudden cardiac death, relatives are supported and have specialist ICC advice at an, excuse me, at an earlier stage. That they know about their need for screening and to be supported in that referral or for a direct referral to the coronial system in the ICC hospital, depending on what is available in each area and each area runs slightly differently. That they have a good understanding about the benefits of saving tissue on their deceased loved one and so that we can then perform um, a molecular autopsy. In the future for the um, families where there's been a, a sudden arrhythmic death we hope to perform whole genome sequencing um, and then further on down the line trio testing as well with the parents. The project is supported by the British Heart Foundation, who are providing strategic oversight, training and evaluation. 
Um, we're also working with cardiac risk in the young and between CRI and BHF, they've helped uh, create a number of different training resources and information leaflets for families. We also have the support of the Chief Coroner and it is being funded by NHS England and Genomics England through the GMSAs. The Royal College of Pathologists and several senior coroners have been involved in the development of the pathway, so a lot of this is in line with their usual practice. Just to highlight the existing pathway for those who are unfamiliar with it, it does vary according to areas, so this is a broad overview of what happens when there's a sudden cardiac death. After an unexplained or unexpected death, the coroner's case opens. The pathologist then performs a post-mortem and spleen may be taken and stored at this point for the potential future use of doing a genetic test or a molecular autopsy. They may send the heart for cardiac pathology if they want inf input from others and toxicology is usually taken at this point and sent. Any tissue that's taken during the coronial stage is under the coronial jurisdiction. But at the end of the coronial case, the family have to consent to that tissue being saved or returned as it then falls under the Human Tissue Act. If consented to, the mortuary team um, stores the tissue and helps transport it to the genetic lab. But again, that kind of happens a bit further on in the pathway. At the end of the coronial case, the coroner tells the family that the cause of death was an inherited cardiac condition and that they should be screened. So to ask their GP for referral to an ICC hospital. Only once the rel relatives get to the ICC hospital does all that specialist advice um, uh, start and that can be many months after the death. The family is screened and treatment provided and then cancelled about having a genetic test or a molecular autopsy. If tissue wasn't saved then it's just too late at that point and it can't be performed. If it was then it's normally the ICC nurse or genetic counsellor who um, if the family consent to it then liaise with the mortuary team uh, and the genetic lab to uh, transport that tissue over. And even then at that point the results on the um, molecular autopsy can take about six months to come back. There's a few points in the pathway that can pose challenges. Spleen may not be saved or there might not be any facilities to store tissue. One of the mortuaries that I work with um, has one of those little fridges. It's a Victorian public mortuary that has one of those little fridge freezers that we all probably had in the 1980s with ice boxes within the, the fridge and the ice is overflowing into the fridge compartment. Um, and we need the, the spleen to be stored at minus 80 or in a solution called RNA later, but that's quite expensive and mortuaries don't tend to have that. So a lot of this is working with the, the um, uh, mortuary uh, teams to find out what um, facilities they do have. Family might not consent to tissue being saved because they might not understand the real benefits to them about saving tissue and the ability to perform a genetic test. And they might be put off by the consent form, which at the moment um, for in most areas says for the tissue to be stored for medical research and education purposes rather than for clinical use or talking about um, genetic testing. Moving from the coronial system to the NHS at the end of the coronial system it isn't kind of a seamless transition. It relies on relatives actively seeking that referral from their GP, knowing that they have to be referred um, uh, and just being generally quite proactive in, in, in that process. If we can start the specialist ICC support at an earlier stage though and help the families between the coronal system and the NHS then hopefully more families um, will engage with screening, saving tissue and just not fall out of the system. Each area within the pathway works slightly differently. In some areas the ICC coordinator is actually speaking to the families a bit earlier after that initial post-mortem whereas most areas are tending to speak to the family um, at the end of the coronial case but it is largely dependent on what the coroner has asked for. From a coronial perspective there's no additional money so they've tried not to change this part of the pathway too much and they're very overworked and under-resourced, even more so than the NHS. Um, they've asked that the pathologist, though, highlight eligible cases to the coroner's officer so that then they can talk to the family about retaining tissue. 
The consent form also now includes the option to save tissue for clinical use rather than just for education and research. Um, uh, so hopefully it's just a bit more specific so that pay, uh, families um, understand why they're saving it and, that, and they can also be talked to uh, and have the discussion briefly about genetic testing. The coroner's officers can also liaise and um, signpost the families to the BHF and CRI charity telephone advice lines, and there are also leaflets that are available. Um, and if families then consent, then the coroner's officer will refer them over to the uh, ICC coordinator. So for me to then start to um, explain a bit more in, in depth um, about their referral and screening process. Our inclusion criteria are any sudden cardiac death aged between one and 60 years. They can be an out of hospital death or people who have survived long enough to reach hospital but then died later on in ITU. Or if an ICC was identified as an incidental finding on a post-mortem. So if someone was, uh, you know, for example, died from a stabbing but then found to have a cardiomyopathy on the post-mortem. We're not looking at people who have died from coronary artery disease and we're not looking at non-genetic causes like myocarditis. For the wide age group, we have the SADs and the cardiomyopathies. And for the narrow age group, we have the aortopathies and severe mitral valve disease. For this pilot, we have one senior coroner within each GMSA region who has agreed to include patients from their jurisdiction in the pathway. Any patient meeting the inclusion criteria who dies within the coronial jurisdiction of the senior coroner who's agreed to take part will be included. For the coordinators, we have um, Kim, who's in Manchester and she covers several coronal areas. Georgiana in Birmingham, uh, a new colleague in Bristol. Um, I, I'm afraid I don't quite know who's taken over there uh, for the South West GMSA. Elaine, who I can see on the call, uh, covers Sheffield and she's in the North East and Yorkshire GMSA. Uh, Laura is in Leicester for the East GMSA and KT is at St George's for the South East GMSA. And then I cover North Thames. So for the North Thames region, um, the senior coroner who's agreed to take part is Mary Hassel. So she covers uh, deaths within inner North London. So that's Hackney, Tower Hamlets, Camden and Islington. There are five hospital based mortuaries and three public mortuaries. And the facilities for storing tissue at each mortuary is quite different. Some have minus 80 freezers, some rely on the RNA later and some have no storage facilities. So it's working with them um, to talk through different options like uh, moving the tissue to, to other mortuaries within the jurisdiction. We've also approached uh, Mr Irvin in East London uh, within his coronial jurisdiction. He covers quite a large area from Newham and Waltham Forest out towards uh, um, Barking and Dagenham. And then we've recently also um, contacted Miss Hewitt who covers uh, the Square Mile, so the City of London. For the South East uh, of London, the South East GMSA, um, the senior coroner is Mr Harris and he covers deaths within Inner South London, so Lambeth uh, out east towards Greenwich. Um, and they have a public mortuary in Greenwich and then the hospital mortuaries at King's and St Thomas's. They're also, uh, for the South East GMSA, they're also expanding to take uh, referrals from Inner West London, from that coronial jurisdiction as well. They estimated about three to four index cases a month per region, but that is probably a maximum rather than an average. The estimates uh, for the study were based on some studies from Scandinavia and then the data extrapolated to our population and age criteria. Our most recent data set is from May. In the whole programme, 60 index cases had been referred and there were just over four at risk relatives for every index case. Um, so people who should be um, referred for, for screening or offered screening. As of May, 137 of them had been screened, highlighting the long waits uh, for an I ICC appointment. 
There was a reasonable, ju reasonable jump in cases between January and May, just highlighting the time it takes for the pathway to be embedded and referrals to start coming through. To help future proof the genetic testing on the deceased in the SADS cases, we will be performing whole genome sequencing. For the confirmed cases of cardiomyopathy and aortopathy, they will have the corresponding genetic panel. The current sudden cardiac death panel looks at about just over 70 genes. For the whole genome sequencing, we will be blinded to the results outside of the current 70 genes um, to help lim limit the variance of unknown significance in completely unrelated genes. What this will allow us to do, though, is that as new genes are identified, we can simply unblind that gene um, to see if the deceased patient had that alteration or had an alteration there. We don't know when, but at some point we will be offering trio testing to the SADS families as well. There was a gradual expansion of the project. Most coordinators are now receiving referrals from adjacent coroners and we are accepting referrals from GPs uh, for eligible cases. They are looking to include the coordinator role in the service specification, um, which should hopefully be out at some point next year, um, so that it can then be rolled out across England. In summary, we have a new 12 to 24 month programme, which is aiming to improve links between the coronial system and the NHS, so patients have better information, support, and there is better uptake in tissue being saved and genetic testing for our sudden cardiac death families. Thank you.